I am nervous about the pain of natural birth. Is there a way to make it less painful? How to politely tell people not to waste their money on popular items that we won't be using. Any thought on how to avoid C-section? Approximate time it can take to get pregnant. It seems like it happens fast for some. I don't know if I'm strong enough for natural birth. What's up, I'm 39 weeks pregnant with my fifth baby. I literally cannot believe I've been pregnant this many times. It blows my mind. I thought I was in labor last night, but my body slowed down. So now I've got some time. So let's do a Q&A pregnancy birth edition. You guys have amazing questions. Some of these questions I would have never thought of. Some of these questions I literally had myself when I was a first time mom or pregnant with my second or even my third. Like I have wondered these things as well. We are going to be talking about how to avoid induction. We're going to be talking about natural birth. We're going to be talking about how to get pregnant. We're going to be talking about so many things. So make sure you stay through for all of these amazing questions. Some of these questions today I actually answer in depth in my course, Labor Without Fear, but I'm gonna answer them for you today too. So the first one is tips for keeping it as natural as possible in the midst of an induction. She gave a little bit more context that she's having to be induced. And so what are my tips? I actually had a friend who got induced recently after two home births because she was having an issue with some bleeding, which totally makes sense that she needed to be induced. And the one thing that she did was she slowly ramped up her Pitocin very, very, very slowly. And then once she was in labor, she asked them to cut the Pitocin off. So I think one thing to think about is that you are in control of the amount of Pitocin that they are giving you. And she just started it like literally out of one and every hour just went up a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. She kept moving. You know, the moment you get an epidural, you can't really move anymore. And so she wanted to just slowly increase the Pitocin, but still be able to move her body, which I thought was really, really great. And she ended up having a vaginal birth that was very beautiful, even in the midst of a very unforeseen circumstance. The next question is, what do you think of, or where do you go to mentally if you are stuck in labor? And so I think what I was thinking about with this is, like if things are not progressing. And if things are not progressing, a really great idea is to just keep moving. Keep moving. If you're moving, baby's moving. I would say if things are not progressing and it's the middle of the night, if you can rest, rest, you know, getting in the bathtub and things like that. But if you want things to move ahead, I would say mild circuit is great to do. I would say moving as much as possible. That's where having a doula is really, really helpful because the doula is going to show you different positions to get in. But if you're stuck mentally, I mean, one thing that really, really helps me is to just think of the baby and think about, okay, I cannot wait to meet you, baby, just completely shifting my focus to baby off myself. Like maybe the reason why I'm not progressing is I'm being very self-protective instead of thinking about like, my body knows what to do. My baby knows what to do. I'm going to partner with them. And so just really fixating on like this whole thing is about baby. So if you can get, keep baby, you know, if you know baby's name, maybe journaling to baby, even in the midst of labor can be really helpful to help things progress. So here is a pregnancy related one. I have written things out on my registry asking people to not buy certain things like lotions and soaps due to mine and my son's sensitive skin. But I would love your input on how to politely tell people not to waste their money on popular items that we won't be using. So I talk about this in my 30 things I won't be buying video, which has some very interesting comments because I said some things that were a little bit controversial, but I totally believe them. And I also talk about how to, you know, handle baby registry stuff with people just giving you stuff you don't really want. I actually rehome things to pregnancy resource centers if it's something that I have a duplicate of that I really don't need and I can't return. But it's it's so it's so tricky. Like I I think just honesty. Like if somebody asks you like, "Hey, you know, do you have a preference on what you want?" I think just being honest. I mean, especially in the south, I think we have the problem of one of my friends calls it decorating everything the way we talk instead of just like coming straight out and being like, "I could really use this." If you want to put money towards this, like I could really use a stroller. I may be asking people to put their money towards this big item that, you know, it would be hard for you to purchase is a really good way to keep people from buying a lot of random stuff you don't want. But at the end of the day, you're just going to get some of that stuff. So just being okay with rehoming it, just not keeping it. You don't have to keep it just because somebody gave it to you. You can still show gratitude that they thought of you and not keep it in your home. Have you heard of the fresh test as an alternative to a traditional glucose test? For me, I did the traditional glucose test when I was out in California. I think there was a little bit more regulation and my midwife had me go do that. It's terrible. Um, and then I had a midwife in Tennessee and she didn't make me do it. She actually had me eat a certain amount of gummy bears. 
a certain amount of time before I came. It was just how much, I guess it was maybe just like how much sugar or carb ratio. There was something there within a certain amount of time. And then she tested me. And then I'm here in North Carolina with a midwife and she didn't test me at all. I went and looked up the fresh test last night, but I don't know a whole lot about it. I will say if you push back on that glucose test, you ask if there's another alternative you know, just ask, start asking questions because there is some pretty nasty stuff in that glucose test. And also, you know, I don't think the glucose tests are extremely accurate. You know, if you test positive for gestational diabetes, it can really hurt your chances of going natural if you want to go natural. Now, I will say if you are having gestational diabetes symptoms, you know, it is important to, to get on that, to change your diet, but really a lot of diet change can help that. And a lot of that is just dressing up your carbs, making sure you're having a protein, every protein and fat, every time you're having carbs, you know, just having lots and lots of carbs and then not exercising, not getting all of that sugar from circulating in your bloodstream. Yeah. It, it can cause a lot of is issues with gestational diabetes. And actually one of my midwives had had, um, one of her few losses was a mom with gestational diabetes for the baby. And so I think she did take that very seriously out in California. And so it's, it's important, but I would just say, ask questions. It sounds like this fresh test, it was like a lot better ingredients than the normal traditional glucose test. So just, just ask, can't hurt. What did you find to be the hardest part of your transition from one to two? I'm here to tell you, I have had endless questions. Was it harder to go from zero to one, one to two, two to three? And there's been hard parts of it all. I really can't say that one has been harder than the other because here is the deal. Hard is not bad. And, you know, just reframing that there's going to be a new challenge every time you add a new member to your family. I will say, you know, from one to two, it was just like I had a little bit less free time. But I don't know that that was a bad thing. I'm not even sure I was using my free time as wisely as I could have. And in some ways, it was a little bit more fulfilling because in the ways when I had one, you know, maybe I was a little bit bored sometimes. And so, but what was the hardest part of the transition from one to two? I think it was just that when, you know, one was down or one was easy, one, you know, I still had another one to take care of. And so it was just splitting myself splitting my attention, but then you just let go of some things that are just really not important. Okay, this question is, have you worried about ultrasounds in your pregnancy and like the effect that that can have on your baby? I haven't worried about it because I only had one ultrasound. Typically when you go to a midwife, they're not really going to have a lot of ultrasound machines. They typically send you out of the office for something like that. So because I was seeing a midwife, I didn't have a whole lot of ultrasounds. And honestly, I just feel like in the spectrum of things I can worry about i mean there's endless things you can be consumed with like is this hurting my baby this hurting my baby this hurting my baby i just felt like you know maybe i'm ignorant to some of that stuff but i have just really focused more on my environment the foods i'm eating the stuff i'm putting on my skin and how that impacts baby and a little bit less on like the one to two ultrasounds that maybe i'll get next one is do i have a registry this is my fifth baby so i did not do a registry for this baby I really wanted to go as minimal as possible. And actually, when I thought I was going into labor last night, I looked at the birth kit list and it said I needed some receiving blankets. And I'm like, I have no receiving blankets. I feel like they're kind of pointless and I have given them all away. But I actually, like Walmart delivered a couple of receiving blankets to me. I just kind of wanted to wait to get to the end and kind of see what I needed. The couple of things that I did purchase is I purchased an attachment off Facebook Marketplace. I love shopping Facebook Marketplace for things. An attachment for my double bob so I can click the baby's car seat in. I actually have to get a car seat that is compatible with that, but I'm just going to get a used car seat to use with that stroller because my sister gave me her Max Cozy car seat for the car. And then what else? I got a cover. I'll switch it over here. I got a cover for the um, Docatot my friend got me. Just as people have asked me what I needed, I have just been like, I could really use this one thing. Um, you know, I went to a thrift sale and got an amazing, like it was like a curated thrift sale, amazing, some amazing baby clothes. And some friends have got me some minimal baby clothes. I actually got like a PJ set that I kind of wanted. And I got some more bamboobies to put um, in my bra for nursing. I, I have given so much stuff away, like I had given those away. So it's just cool to see how when you give stuff away, the Lord just brings it back to you. He brings back what you need. And 
it's been fine. I got some more bra extenders and things like that that I had given away. So really didn't get a whole lot of stuff. And I'm going to borrow a friend's bassinet. It's nothing special. Like she's had it for all of her kids, but I won't use it that long. I'm borrowing a friend's old swing. It's not amazingly beautiful. Doesn't matter. I'm just grateful because the baby's only using it for three months. So I really just kept it so, so minimal this time. What I said in that 30, 30 things I'm not buying, like, I'm telling you, I've cut it, cut it way, way down. And that video could be so helpful for you because if you just are so overwhelmed with all the baby things that you feel like you need, I really try to drill it down to like what I feel like are the absolute necessities. The one thing I kind of want to get is I kind of want to get one of those wild bird baby carriers. Like I have my Urco, but the wild bird one looks a little prettier. So that's maybe like one thing I would add. But um, besides that, just kept it pretty minimal. I am nervous about the pain of natural birth. Is there a way to make it less painful? Yes. Lots of ways to make it less painful. One, change your core beliefs about birth. You know, the way you think about birth, the way you interpret all the sensations that you feel, the contractions, all of that is your brain makes the decision 100% of the time whether you feel pain or not. They have found that to be true. They taught that to my husband at physical therapy school. And so if you are interpreting all the sensations that you're feeling in labor as like, this is good, give me more, your body will send out less pain. But you have to believe that to your core. You have to believe that the contractions are working baby down and out and that baby coming down and out is good. You have to believe that to your core. So that definitely helps. Okay, so some of these questions I do talk about in the course. What, what if my doctor doesn't think that I can have a natural birth? If you really want to have a natural birth and your doctor doesn't think it's possible, you have to remember you're the customer and they are the business provider and you can go to somebody else. And so when you're trying to figure out who your healthcare provider is, interview them. I have a pregnancy um, survival guide that you should definitely download. It's completely free. In that download, there are some questions you can ask your healthcare provider. If you see some red flags, you can always change healthcare providers. You are not stuck. My friend switched providers at 35 weeks and it went really well for her. It was a scary decision, but at the end of the day, her doctor just didn't believe she could do some of the things that she ended up being able to do. And so I would just realize that you have a lot more say so than you realize that you do. Was induced and had a C-section with my first child due to too much fluid. Any thought on how to avoid C-section? I would first make sure I have a healthcare provider that believes that I can VBAC. It like completely believes in me and believes that it's possible and has done a lot of VBACs. And the second thing would be to avoid being induced unless it's just so, so medically necessary. Like my friend who, was, who woke up with a ton of blood, like she needed to be, you know, induced. But a lot of times in, when you induce a pregnancy, it causes a cascade of interventions. You can go look that up. But it's just like one thing kind of leads to another and a lot of it ends in a C-section. And so just avoiding induction if at all possible. And that's where having a healthcare provider that you really trust, like when they say, okay, you know, Lana, we need to do, we need to be induced. It's like, okay, like full stop. I completely believe you. I agree with you. And that's how I feel about my midwife is I really know that if she told me, Lana, we have to go do something else. We have to transport or whatever. I would totally believe her. So just make sure you feel really good to your core about your healthcare provider. Working out during pregnancy and still staying active, but being strong for when baby is born. Okay, here's my thing about working out in pregnancy. I think it's great. I think you should be working out. I also feel like it's not a time to do like physical, amazing feats. Like your pelvic floor, it can be really weak because your body is releasing a hormone called relaxin and it can do a lot of damage on your pelvic floor if there's a lot of pounding. And so I ran my first pregnancy just, I think, to feel like strong and keep doing what I was doing, but it actually caused a lot of problems with my pelvic floor. And so I do a lot of light body weight stuff. Um, just I walk a ton just trying to feel strong. But honestly, you know, and I've done CrossFit through some of my workout, through some of my pregnancies, but I modify, 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 like modify a ton. I'm doing nothing with my abs. I don't want to cause any more separation than I have to. So just dialing it way down, this is just a time to take it easy and just move at a moderate level. You shouldn't have your your breath like so high that you can't breathe. Approximate time it can take to get pregnant. It seems like it happens fast for some. Yes, it does happen really fast for some and it doesn't happen fast for other people. 
and that is just such a mystery, but I think that some things that can help, one, I would definitely say if you are wanting to get pregnant, consider buying the book, Taking Charge of Your Fertility. She offers some really good wisdom that helps you just understand your body and understand like how to not get pregnant, how to get pregnant, but also just reading the signs of your body, how to get off birth control, that's very, very important if you wanna get pregnant in the future. I don't know how many times this is so tender and so sensitive, but how many times I've talked to women who literally just get off birth control and then they miscarry or they just get a, they get the IUD out and then they mis miscarry because, you know, it makes your uterine lining unstable. And so it always hurts my heart so much because I feel like the person who prescribed those types of birth control did not educate that person about the risks of what it could be like when they, it t when they do go to get pregnant. And so I think making sure you're nourishing yourself. Like there are some great courses out there that really teach you how to nourish your body. Like if you are in calorie deficit and you are not getting the right fuel for your body, your body is not going to feel like it, it can conceive. And so um, just really learning how to read your body, take care of your body, understand your body is going to be very essential to give yourself the best shot. Of course, the Lord's in control and, you know, these things are just mysteries why some people are given children and some are not. And I know it's just a hard and a hurtful thing for a lot of women. But, you know, we can control what we can control. And that is getting all the education we can and taking the best care we can of ourselves. Okay, the last one is, I don't know if I'm strong enough for natural birth. So I hear her heart's desire. She wants to have a natural birth, but she doesn't know if she's strong enough. Here's what I would say. Honestly, the Bible teaches that when we are weak, we are strong in the Lord. And so it's not at all about being strong enough. In fact, I, my parents couldn't believe I had a natural birth because I'm literally such a wimp when it comes to pain. But honestly, if you can just prepare your body and your mind to believe that natural birth is good and that 95% of the women in the world need very little inter intervention at all. There's been millions of women who have come before us. I forget the number. It's so crazy. Let me look it up. Every day, 385,000 babies are born around the world. That means, you know, there's some twins in there, but 300,000-ish women are in labor while we're in labor. While I'm in labor, you're in labor. We're not doing it alone. And then we have all the women throughout history that have come before us. And so it's almost like this great cloud of witnesses that are that are all birthing together and just saying, this is... This is the ancient path. We can do this. And so it's not about being strong or being superhuman or super athlete. I feel like it's more about surrendering to the Lord, trusting the whole process and understanding the process. And that's why I made the course Labor Without Fear is because I know fear is a big inhibitor of just being able to surrender to birth the way it's meant to be. And actually, that was my story. My first two births, I was just riddled with fear. And so I've done, had to do a lot of mind work, a lot of soul work to get to the point where I'm like, I'm actually so excited to meet this baby. And, you know, it's not going to be easy, but it's going to be a portal of growth every single time. And it's going to be a trust walk, a faith walk every single time. And that's where I'm at right now is like, I know it's not going to be easy, but I'm not terrified. And that's where I want to help other women get is to not be terrified and just trust the Lord through the whole process. All right, so this baby's coming soon. I, hopefully, I'll put up my birth story soon for you so you can kind of follow along with this journey of having this baby. And if you have any questions that I didn't answer, make sure to drop them in the comment box below. And I'll see you again in the next video.